the next thing was honestly like how much money we could make for such little time that we've been putting into this now i'm not i'm not saying that it's like hands off i'm not saying that we're not doing any work because it was a lot of work in the very beginning 100%. getting everything set up making sure that the cabin was set up all these things that i just talked about that we have in our system um they didn't exist in the very beginning so it took a lot of time to get all that set up but once we got it set up now i'm only spending a couple hours a week if that and it was really honestly shocking. Welcome to STR Unlocked, a podcast for driven vacation rental investors looking to gain the freedom that comes with an abundance of time and money. I'm April. And I'm Nathan. Our life is busy with three small children, full-time jobs, and not nearly enough coffee. And we're unlocking success with short-term rental investing every single day. Join us in our journey as we learn and grow together. If we can do it, so can you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of STR Unlocked. If you're here, you're probably a driven real estate investor looking to invest, or maybe you're already investing in short-term rentals. Either way, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we're going to have a interesting conversation today with my beautiful wife, April. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm ready to talk about the three biggest surprises that we had since uh, investing in our short-term rental and owning and operating it. 100%. And if we seem a little tired, guys, it's because we are. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Today was a, a kind of a tough day day because our, our smallest one, we have three small kids, our smallest is the first day in daycare. So it was, it was kind of a tough morning for drop off. And yeah, <laughs> so yeah. My, my eyes feel a little red because, uh, you know, a little bit of tears and last night was not the greatest for him sleeping wise. So yeah, we're a little tired today, but definitely uh, looking forward to this conversation. So we're going to be talking about the biggest surprises that we've had really since we started our short-term rental journey. Uh, and I think our last episode was on the biggest misconceptions that we had. And that was a really interesting conversation. Go back and check that out. It, it was really about the things that we were wrong about going into this. But uh, we figured it'd also be interesting to talk about the biggest surprises that we've had in the time that we've been investing in short-term rentals and managing uh, and operating our own uh, short-term rental. So what's the first thing that you remember being really surprised about? Yeah. So we are coming up on one year, uh, cause we closed on our cabin on December 21st, I believe if I'm re remembering correctly. Yeah. So it's been almost a year. It's currently mid November now. Um, the very first thing that I remember being very surprised about is how really like it was, easy, like how, how easy we slid into this new norm. Um, and what I mean by that is whenever you're going into something new, uh, there's always going to be a learning curve. There's always a little bit of anxiety there. You're always, um, a little nervous, right? That you're going to be successful. And this was a big thing that we were doing. It was a big swing. I yeah. mean, it's really interesting because really all the other businesses that we've uh, gotten into that we've started, we've always basically scrapped our way in the beginning. We've always basically put no money in uh, and, 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 you know, uh, built the business uh, without any kind of infusement of, of our, of our savings or uh, of the money that we kind of have had built up over the past, you know, 10 years of working. And so this was definitely a different um, it was a different, it was a different experience for us because for sure. we went into this going, okay, like this is the first time we've ever had to believe that something's going to work and also believe in ourselves that we can navigate whatever kind of comes up. And, you know, there's obviously a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of worry and there's a lot of concern when you talk about spending, you know, uh, really uh, any kind of big purchase. So, you know, buying a house of any kind, it's always a little scary at first. So, you know, I think, I think we both kind of, we were, we were surprised at how easy it was to kind of slide into it, get really easy and get uh, how quickly we became comfortable and how we, you know, quickly we learned everything. Yeah. And I mean, just to kind of go a little bit further with that, right. So we are self managing it ourselves, right? So we are screening gas, we are you know, collecting payments, we are handling issues, we are doing all of this remotely, by the way, because we live three and a half hours away from our rental. So doing things like hiring cleaners and maintenance people, calling around for electricians when there's problems, um, sending items to guests when the guests need items, like 
all of these things are things that really I, I, I laid in bed and I stayed awake, you know, thinking about all the things that could go wrong. Like, well, how are we going to do with this? I actually like, do remember that. I, yeah. Oh, there was so much sleep that was lost over yeah. that. But yeah, when the offer was accepted, I think that's when it like, uh, I think the concern really ramped up was after it was accepted, right? Before we got to closing, that's when really all the questions started coming. And I, I remember a couple of nights you were having trouble going to sleep. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so I lost a lot of sleep over. I will say though, everything worked out. It was fine, right? Like all those worst case scenarios that had been going through my head, none of them came true. Um, and we were able to learn our way and be successful with it. So, you know, anytime that you do something new, have something new happen in your life, you adjust and you adapt and you make the best of the situation. Not that it was a bad thing, but you make the best of the situation and it becomes your new normal. And you just get used to doing that new thing now. And so it was just very surprising to me how quickly we slid into that new normal and now how, you know, integrated it is with the rest of our life. And we don't spend a whole lot of time on it. And we've gone through that in other episodes about, you know, how much time that we've spent and why we're able to spend such little time on it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's been really interesting just how easy and quickly it just became integrated into our lives. Yeah. You do want to talk about like how, 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 why it's easy. I mean, cause I think, I think that shouldn't get lost. I mean, there's just the idea It's easy to say it got easy, but why do you think that is? Because at this point now, like it doesn't really require any mental bandwidth on our part. It's definitely not taking an emotional to like it did in the very beginning. <laughs> so like, what, what is it about the, the, what we've built with the business that does make it easy? Yes, yeah, so I would I would say systems and repetition. So we have systems in place. We have uh, software that we use for pricing. We have software that we use for managing it, for uh, sending uh, cleaners appointments, for you know how everything is supposed to work. So everybody knows their their place in the system and it just kind of runs. And so we're only having to deal with problems now that everything's set up because we're not having to take the mental bandwidth to set up the new thing every single time that we have a new booking. So it just kind of runs itself. And then the second thing is repetition. So the first time that a guest sends a message about the air conditioner not working, or um, you know they can't get the hot tub to work, or you know they have questions about where to have pizza delivered, right? You're having to spend time going through and researching that. Well, how do I word this so that the guest is going to leave a good review and be able to, you know, have a great experience. Once you have that message kind of composed, you copy and you paste it and you change it slightly for the next problem. And so by having that repetition in there, it just makes it a lot easier and a lot less time consuming um, whenever something else comes up. And it's also a lot easier whenever you're going in and you're doing things like pricing and trying to figure out how to price your property. Once you have your systems in place, you're going to pull up Airbnb, you're going to pull up Verbo, you're going to search for dates that are X number of weeks out. You're going to see where you lay in your competition and then you're going to adjust accordingly. You have the things that you do, you have your habits that you do in order to manage it. And it then just becomes second nature. Like you're getting up in the morning, you're brushing your teeth, you're taking your shower and getting dressed. Like it's just something that you do every single day. And it just, at that point, becomes not mindless, but a lot easier than it was in the beginning. Yeah, that's super well said. And the only thing I want to add on, because that, that those are all really good points. The only thing I would add on to that, and this is not something that we talk about a lot on this show yet, because we're still learning the acquisition part. Like we don't, the reason why we don't talk and give suggestions on buying more properties and those kind of things is because we haven't been able to experience that ourselves yet. So we don't really have a lot to say on it. But here's what I can say with certainty that we have learned. It's that fundamentally, and this goes for all the businesses that I have and, 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 and all the time I've spent, you know, serving customers, it's that the product has to be good. And I think oftentimes when we're looking at short term rentals or we're looking at uh, a house or properties, we don't look at it like it's a product, right? It, there is such a thing called product market fit. And if the, the property itself is not set up to be successful, then you're obviously going to have a far tougher time and a far harder time with it. You know, one of the things that we did, and I'm not saying that you should, or you, or you need to, or whatever, this is just what we did and what we found success with, but we, it was important to us to go with a new construction home, or if, if it wasn't going to be a house that was new construction, something that was relatively new and modern, because we knew that that would be a product that would cause us less problems or less, or at least less likely to cause us a lot of problems, particularly in the first couple of years when we're getting our, 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 our feet grounded. 
And so, you know, we bought the product that we felt that we felt that we could sell easily and that would sell easily. And that's so important. It's, uh, it, 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 I I would often kind of liken this to, uh, if, you know, why do you buy the, the phone that you buy? Like if you love iPhones or if you love Samsung or or the, the note or whatever it's called, like, why do you purchase that phone? It's because the phone is built to solve your problems. Right. And at the end of the day, we should be looking at our short-term rental properties really in the same light. Is it fitting the, is it solving the problems? Is it fitting the need that the, uh, the avatar that I have for this property uh, wants and needs, you know, is, is it solving, is it solving their, their problems and their needs, uh, to put just a pin in this, as far as, uh, as making the point, we literally just got back this past weekend from uh, taking a trip. We stayed in Airbnb in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, very cool beachfront. It's, at, it's on Jack's beach. It was a really cool experience, really great experience that we should probably talk about sometime because the air, like the short term rental was awesome, but, uh, it solved our, I solved our needs. We were only there for one night. We, it was just as we were transitioning, but we needed a place that had three bedrooms to be able to deal with us and the kids and what we needed to be able to sleep and have a, have a good experience. Uh, but we also wanted it to be close to the beach or beachfront. We needed it to be ground level floor because moving the kids in and out, you know, uh, all these things kind of come together to be able to like check off the boxes that we have as parents so that when we're traveling with our kids, it will, it will, it will have a good experience. Right. So again, just thinking through those, starting with the product and making sure that you have a good product and making sure it's a product that you feel comfortable, that you can stand behind and that you know that you can sell to the intended audience or the intended uh, avatar, the intended clients that you are looking to have book your property is really, really important. Yeah, for sure. It it definitely made it easier. A hundred percent. All right. So what was the next thing? Uh, yeah. So the next thing was honestly, like how much money we could make for such little time that we've been putting into this. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's like hands off. I'm not saying that we're not doing any work because it was a lot of work in the very beginning, 100%. getting everything set up, making sure that the cabin was set up our, our short term rental was set up and making, hugely uh, uh, stressful, hugely stressful. Right. Um, and getting, you know, all of the software, getting all the listings, getting all the people in place. So all these things that I just talked about that we have in our system, um, they didn't exist in the very beginning. So it took a lot of time to get all that set up. But once we got it set up, now I'm only spending a couple hours a week, if that, on, you know, adjusting pricing, making sure that the pictures are good, um, answering guest questions. All this stuff is very, very minimal. And it was really honestly shocking. Like I knew that the money was going to come in. I knew that we were going to do well with it. Well, we didn't know. We just believed. (laughs) We we believed really hard. We we knew in the very beginning that it should work, right? Right. We didn't know how successful or unsuccessful it would be, Um, but we had faith in ourselves and in our product to be able to make money with it. And I got to tell you, there's, there's something, I don't know, there's something that changes in you that very first booking that you get right? And you see that, you hear that ding on your phone of like the Airbnb, like notification telling you, Hey, you got a booking, you got an inquiry or whatever. And, you know, looking at it and, and seeing how much money that you were going to make for this one booking. And then when the guest is actually staying there, you know, you're just doing normal stuff around the house and you look down and you're like, Hey, like we're, we're making, you know, $2,000 this weekend, or we're making you know, X amount of money this weekend. And we're not really doing, doing anything, anything, right? We're here to answer questions, but we're not really doing anything. And so, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times where we've had a guest come in and um, there's no issues. And we're just literally sitting there making the money. Now we're paying for all the, pro- the, the, um, the, for the house and for, you know, the cleaners and all the other things that are going into it. It's not free money, um, but it feels like free money. It does feel right. Like free so money. we just we just had a booking last night. Literally last night, we had a Christmas booking that came in it's for not, four it's nights. Not even on Christmas. Yeah, it's not even on Christmas. It's just the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, four nights. It's not even a very long booking, and it's a nine thousand dollar booking. And you know, looking down and being able to see that, and just knowing. Um, how, again, how little time we're actually spending on it to be able to make that much money. It's it just, feels almost criminal. <laughs> it feels almost criminal. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling. And, um, we're very blessed to be able to, you know, be doing this, um, with our short term rental. So it's, it's just been, it's really been surprising just how, 
successful it's actually been. Um, even though people told us that it was going to be a great investment and other people told us their stories of how much money they were making uh, with the time that they've invested. It just wasn't really something that I believed until it actually happened. Yeah. And I'm always careful to like talk about how much money we make off of the rental because, you know, there there could be people who listen to this who's like, oh, well, they got to be millionaires. I'm like, no, <laughs> like the, the money that we're making is covering the expenses first and foremost. And then we're just reinvesting the rest of the money. Like there's there's no... Yeah, it's going to be a while before we feel like we're getting a true payoff, right? But just to know, like it feels good to to have some security there and to know that, um, you know, we are moving and we're taking big steps to getting to our ultimate goal, which is uh, to to live a, um, uh, oh, what's it called? A financially free life. And that's really what we want, right? And so we're taking big steps and we're getting there a lot quicker than we ever thought that we could before. So that, that part definitely feels good. And again, it, it, the success and, and getting that kind of return hinges on two very important things, right? And, and, I, and I can say this with certainty because we've experienced it. And the first is we bought right, we have a good product, right? And we've built a business uh, cor correctly around that product. And those, the hospitality business, which is what it is. I say that all the time on this podcast, but we've built a hospitality business correctly around that product. And if you do those two things, you'll find success as well. There's, it's not complicated and it's not hard, um, but it is, it's, it's definitely something where you have to ensure that the, you know, that the property that you're, that you're purchasing and that you're setting up is the right one. Um, and then you've got to make sure that you're setting up your systems and you got to make sure that you're setting up, uh, your, uh, client communication, um, and, and your, uh, you know, all the information on your OTAs, all the listings got to be correct. Like all that stuff's got to be in place, but if you do the right things, you'll get good results. And, uh, so that's, that's definitely been a good feeling for sure. All right. So the last thing, what is the third and last biggest surprise? So the third and last, it, it, I guess it shouldn't have been a surprise, but it's, it's a lot of fun, like how much fun it actually is <clears throat> running a hospitality business. So it's fun from the perspective of, you know, this is our property and we're providing this experience to other people. So our family, we like to go and we like to stay at fun places, right? We take our families on vacations every so often. We try to. As we much try as we to. Um, and we like to stay at places that are comfortable and places that we really can connect with one another and relax and enjoy, you know, the scenery and all the amenities that it has to offer. And it's it's been incredible being able to provide that to other families as well. Um, so we have a lot of pride in that. And not just us, but also our kids. Well, maybe not the two-year-old, the baby, but our six-year-old. Yeah, um, this has by far probably been the coolest thing about the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, he has so much pride in, when we talk to him about the cabin. Um, so we have a cabin in Gatlinburg and how we have other families that are staying there. And so the conversations that we've been having with him about, yeah, you know, this is one of the ways that mom and dad make money. You know, we have a cabin and we are letting other families stay there um, for money and they're having vacations in our home. Um, and so having the conversations with him and talking about, you know, how, you know, well, who's, who's sleeping in my bed and, you know, they're, they're out in the rocking chairs, you know, looking at the mountains and they're eating breakfast in our kitchen. Um, and how excited he is being able to be a part of that, even though he's not actually running the business, um, just seeing the excitement that he has and sharing that business knowledge with him. It was something that I didn't think would be a benefit of having a short-term rental, um, but it's been a really cool surprise and a really cool experience to share with him. Yeah, it's really interesting how much of it he picks up, right? And 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 it's all we it's all on a very rudimentary level with him, of course. But you know, it's really funny too. Just to add on to this and to wrap up, I guess like one of the things that I've felt very blessed by when it's come to, you know, ever since I started the journey with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, listening to the Bigger Pockets podcast, ever since I really started my journey in seeing the world in a different way um, than I used to when I was a high school teacher, is that it's definitely allowed me to help uh, the kids who are in our family open their eyes a little bit to possibilities that they probably wouldn't have thought about earlier themselves. So like a good, for instance, uh, we were at a, we had a storage facility and we don't do storage. It's not like, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to advocate that we, that we are, that you should be doing storage or we do storage or whatever, but we were at a storage facility and I had our niece who's 10 years old, 
I think. Yeah, she's yeah, 10. 10. And I had her just as f- just for fun because we were like moving stuff. And I-, I had her go around and count how many units there were. And then we actually took the numbers for how much they were renting those units out. And, and it's very rough, right? But again, it's rudimentary for a 10 year old. And I was like, so how much money does this place make? And then, you know, like we actually do the calculation on, on our, on our cell phone and then she, she, and it's more money than she's ever considered before. Right. And so it's just getting them thinking along those lines, which is, Hey, this isn't just a building. What they're doing with the building actually matters. And you can turn it into a business just by using this building for a specific purpose or, or whatever. So I, I definitely, uh, I will say like, as we become investors and as we, learn more. And as we grow ourselves, it's really a lot of fun. And I feel very fulfilled that we get to pass this on to, 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 to the young ones in a way that I wish that uh, we had learned when we were young, you know? Um, so yeah, that's definitely been really, really fun. Yeah. So those are our, I guess, top three surprises. Um, I'm sure that we're going to run into many more along the road. And I'm Hopefully. sure that I'm, I'm forgetting some, <laughs> um, but those are definitely our top three uh, surprises in managing and owning our short-term rental. Um, in the coming weeks and months, we're going to be adding another one. Uh, we're currently in the hunt for our next short-term rental, uh, looking in the Gatlinburg area and then also looking in uh, some other mountain areas as well. So I'm excited to find that and then share that with everybody once uh once all the details are in place yeah for sure guys hopefully this conversation helped you in some small way uh if you are looking into short-term rentals and you're 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 wondering is this for me and this for my family maybe some of the things that we were surprised with might um you know might help you kind of get over that hump that we once felt too about investing in short-term rentals uh and also if, if if any of this resonates with you let us know like it's one of the coolest things by far about doing this podcast and about about doing the, sh- the short-term rental meetups that we have here in Greenville, one of the coolest things about doing these things is, is connecting with other parents, especially parents, but anybody who are investing as well and, and doing short-term rentals themselves. So we'd love to find if any of this resonates with you and you've experienced the same thing, reach out to us, let us know. Cause I, I would, I would really love to, to chat with you and talk to you and, and, and find out what your experience has been to guys. Hopefully the conversation has been helpful. And as always uh, feel free to visit strunlog.com If you want to find out more information about April and I, uh, you can also, we've also started all of our social channels. So we're getting all those off the ground. So feel free to go find us on the, the talk tick or the gram or, or, or the, the, uh, Facebook. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, feel free to, to check us out there and, and check out some of the content that we're developing there. So guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time and attention. And until next time. Thanks everyone. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this was really helpful to you in your journey of building a business. If you like what you heard, please click subscribe and go to iTunes and give us a rating that helps us out tremendously when we're producing hopefully content of huge value to you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I hope that you have an amazing week. Go out there and crush it. I'll see you soon.